All right. Well. Okay, any questions? So we'll have some office hours next week, same day, Wednesday, and then uh, is the final Friday, um, Saturday, right? Yeah, so. Wednesday and Friday, is that okay? Do you want more? Yeah. Okay, good. Like what time? That's terrible. <laughs> uh, I mean, what about Thursday? I mean, I will definitely do Friday because people are lazy and they study the last day. So I'm not gonna not do Friday because I know people. But uh, what about Thursday? For you, be new. I mean, not everybody's lazy. Um, some people like it. What? Okay, we, huh? Oh, it's not on the published. Uh, is it published? I wanted to, okay, I will add it uh, so you don't have to trust me. It's 75. Yeah. Yeah, 75. Then really. Same uh, like A to uh... So what if I, but you will be studying for the final, right? Yeah, so I don't know what to tell you. I mean, come on Wednesday and then um, how about Friday a different time? 
No, but you have the right, does you, you, I mean, I don't know. This is an exam of finals, a week of finals. So it's hard to, uh, but it's Thursday, okay, at least. All right, all right. And then uh, pass them to Mo. Uh, yeah, pass your questions to Mo. All right, let's start. Uh, No, no, Wednesday and Friday. Yeah. Is that okay? No, I asked you for Thursday, you, you, but you said you're going to study for the final. So, yeah, but you, you said you would be studying for the final, right? Isn't that what you told me? I have, I have two finals exactly on Monday and Friday. Oh, you, Wednesday night you have a... I see, I see. Uh, people on Zoom, what do you think of Thursday and Friday? Uh, for office hours. Yeah? Sounds good. Anybody? We'll be back to back. You you come, you don't know anything, and then you come again and you know less than not anything. Yeah, okay, fine. So Thursday and Friday. Is that too close? Ah, who cares? People don't even like, okay. Um, uh, why do we need this condition? So little, now we're going deeper into this uh, second variation. So remember, uh, once you have this condition, if you can show it in your homework problems, you don't have to use the theorem I said, you can just use this and right away you get that you is a uh, min, okay? So of course, if you do this, you're golden. Um, you don't have to do anything. Um, okay, but uh, anyways, um, so here's some counter examples. Uh, take this functional and let's find the Euler Lagrange. So what's the Euler Lagrange for, um, this guy, what do I put in? D, huh? Right, yeah, so you have DDP uh, of L, and then, um, so so what's the Euler Lagrange? So this guy is zero, plus what? Huh? What? Uh, no, I commented out and I have to put, I put this, it's only one slide. Uh, so what do you think? What is, uh, what is this guy? Um, but I uh, put the minimizer. Huh? Yeah, yeah, three U squared. So you set this to zero. And so what's the solution? Yeah, so U is identically zero. And, uh, but, uh, so it claims, here's the claim. It claims that F of uh, U is bigger than uh, zero, okay? That's the claim, all right? Uh, but that's false. Um, so here's the, the the sequence. Just take uh, take u n equal to negative n. Okay. So uh, f of u n would be uh, minus n cube, which goes to minus infinity. To uh, which goes to minus infinity. Okay, um, but why am I doing this example? Because uh, what is the second variation? So let's do this together. So um, again, the Lagrangian is U cube. Uh, so I don't know if you remember all this stuff. So here's the second variation. Um, it's the integral of L, P, P, V, 
uh, dot squared um, L Z Z V squared and then two times V V dot L Z P. Okay, the reason I remember it is because it looks like a quadratic form. That's how I memorize this. Um, all right, so let's compute this together, get some practice. So again, what is um, LPP? Um, LPP, oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's just because LP is zero. Um, what is LZZ? So this is a, uh, so this is a Z cube here. Yeah, six Z evaluated at Z equal what? What do you think? Uh, the minimizer and then uh, V squared. And then um, what is the LZP? Because you have the P guy, good. Um, so, all right, so so then what is this quantity equal to? When you, once you plug in the minimizer, six V squared times what? Zero, is that okay? So that's why, um, so second variation is zero, yet um, you don't have a minimum, okay? So that's why we keep, hammering that you need uh, strictly positive at the very least. You understand? Okay. Now I will even this. Okay, I will even disprove this. That this is not enough. All right. Now we we'll go to finally the slides. Um, so take this functional. Okay, is that okay with everybody? Can you do Monday? Monday. Why Monday? Don't you need time to study? I guess that's why Thursday and Friday are, or how about Monday? I thought they were too close. Is that okay? Yeah. Is it better than back to back? What do you prefer? Thursday, Friday, Zoom people as well? Or Monday, uh, Friday? What is better for you? Do you want to come study and then come back on Friday? I don't know, it depends. What do you guys prefer? Monday, Friday, or um, uh, Thursday, Friday? Can, I mean, you guys come to class, so you, you get to decide. I don't care, <laughs> but uh, they're not even, I mean, so what do you think? What, what is it? You don't care either or, is that it? Yeah. Okay, I just say that, uh, don't make me like wait here for a while. So you guys, do you guys, do you guys care? <laughs> like I ask like people care. Either or is fine. Okay, I don't know, I mean, I don't know why they're not talking. Are they dead or something? I'm fine with both, all right. Yeah, okay, good, let's do that, fine. If nobody has a complaint, let's just go. All right. Uh, yes, all your Lagrange. Yeah, let's do this, but I, I don't have much time, so I shall do this myself. Um, as you are, if you solve Euler Lagrange, uh, you get the solution to be x squared. Okay, it's not hard, you can do it. And then, um, but then again, uh, you have L of PP is zero and L uh, ZP is zero because they are not derivative terms, right? So they're both zero. So you just have this guy and uh, this is non-zero because they're both non-negative, okay? So then uh, this is looks perfect. So you will think that X squared is a state is a minimizer 
but it's not. So uh, <laughs> uh, this is a very special example. So what you do is you add this perturbation. I mean, this is for you if you want, if you're interested. Uh, this looks like the following triangle. So it goes like this and then like this. Uh, oh no, it's the other way. So it goes like, it goes, uh, so it decreases. And then when you hit, yeah, at some point you hit uh, zero. So it's like this. And it's like a ladder that hits the wall. Uh, so it's an arbitrarily small perturbation. Okay, so you have that phi is less than one over n. And you add it to your minimizer. And you get that uh, x squared plus this minimizer because of this negative in front uh, is actually smaller. Okay, it's smaller for every perturbation and that breaks the local minimum definition, which if you remember, I don't know if you remember, but suppose you have X star minimizer, then you're supposed to find a small enough neighborhood so that uh, you have a, a, you have like a parabola locally, right? That's what it means to be local min. But here it says that you can find a sequence of perturbations, um, X squared plus phi N, so that it's not minimized over it. So it's a saddle point. So the real picture of this is a saddle. So I don't know how to draw a saddle, but it's like this. And then if you follow the direction X squared plus phi N, uh, it uh, is a minimum. So it uh, it's below the minimizer, okay? Because it comes from below, you understand? So uh, f of x squared is here, and then f of x squared plus phi n is below it. Okay? All right, good. So um, anyway, so that tells you that even this condition of strict positivity is not enough. Okay? That's when you come in now into a complex, um, uh, more complicated stuff. So in, in, in finite dimensions, you're done, right? You were supposed, to, like that was enough. In our KKT condition, that was a third KKT condition, positive definite, but here, uh, this is not enough. Yeah, I mean, this is specially picked because it has this minus sign in front. I mean, if you plug it in here, you will see that you get this by hand. But if you're asking about guessing it, I mean, this is a usual perturbation because you know it's bounded by one over N. Uh, it's not like, it's not very specific to this problem, to be honest. This is like a very general thing, like this uh, triangle that I drew like this. It's a very general kind of example. You use it to build counter examples. Yeah, like the counter set. I don't know if you, Stuff like that. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So finally, let me give you a condition that well, I mentioned in the announcement, and I, 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 will, I hope I will have. Uh, I might skip the proof because I want to do the examples, so you see how it works. This was the second variation, and I just moved things around. So. I don't know if you remember in the last 10 minutes from Tuesday, we said that you can go from V dot L uh, Y dot Y dot to V V dot L U U dot and V uh, without the dot squared. You can go from this expression to this one using integration by parts. I don't know if you remember. So, you can get to this expression. And here's the notation for it. So we call the guy in the brackets Q and the guy over here P. Okay, you will see this often um, in the examples. So it saves us time. 
You so this is a proof that I'm doing. You don't need to know any of the proof. You just need to know the result. Uh, but if you want to know what's going on at the back, here's the the argument. Fix a generic function w x. Then since uh, v is a test function, you have this uh, over here. Can anyone tell me why this is true? I don't know if you can figure this out. Zoom people, class people, why is this true? It's stupid, yeah, please tell me. I mean, what is this uh, quantity equal to this integral of derivative? Like, what is it equal to? You can say it, what is it? What? You, I'm not asking you to compute it. Like by definition, when you have F dot, uh, is that what you wanted to say? Yeah, WV square from zero to one, right? But, but they're both zero. Okay, good. Um, so we can add it. So this is a trick because we want to complete the square with respect to a V dot. Okay, so this is just the trick that Legendre figured out uh, 300 years ago. Um, so you, yeah, this is old stuff. You're, you're looking at history now. Uh, so you start with this and you add this guy. You now take its derivative. I took its derivative and I rearranged. And how did I write this? Uh, just to remind you, I wrote it as a quadratic. So let me write uh, big X, big X, A plus uh, B, X plus C, where A is P of X, uh, B, what do you think B is? Can you guess? I don't know if you can guess. 2 VW, great. And then C is the last guy over here, W, Q, uh, V squared. So you get a quadratic, and what do you do with the quadratic? You complete the square. I gave you the formula last time from Wikipedia. So I complete the, the thing. So I have a square term, which is non-negative by definition, plus uh, this extra guy. So I don't know if you remember, when we Taylor expanded, uh, we got that when U star is a minimizer, you necessarily have that this guy is non-negative, okay? You can go back and see. So that's what you necessarily need. So it would be great if we could somehow get this guy to die, uh, this second term. And we just say it's dead. <laughs> this is a very uh, promising technique by math people. Um, so you call it dead, but now you have the UX to make it dead. So, okay, since it's dead, this guy is no negative. Um, and now here's the Lysandre condition. So remember P of X was defined as this, this is wrong. This would be U double per, uh, dot dot for both, okay? So this is what we call the Lysandre uh, condition. Okay, when L of U dot U dot or LPP, is strictly positive because then from this integral, uh, the guy inside is non-zero uh, when V is not zero, okay? And then P of X, uh, yeah, we just said, that's the Lysandre condition, okay? Any questions about this? All right. So that means that yes, um, you get your, your positive definiteness, which again, in the country example is not enough, but you it's a necessary condition. To have any hope of local mean, you need this. Uh, all right, good. So we have this, but then I, I had to cheat. I had to set my second term uh, over here to be zero. 
so it comes back and it's called this equation of here is called Riccati. If you took all these, uh, you should have seen it in the section on nonlinear ODEs solved with stupid tricks, very easy tricks. So you do this substitution, Riccati transformation, <clears throat> and it turns the Riccati equation into this equation, which I hope you will get plenty of practice by next week. So this is the Jacobi equation. And again, I want this guy to be zero. So, so here's the theorem that I mentioned in the announcement. Um, suppose your point is stationary. Suppose that, uh, you know, you have the Lysandre condition, which I need to have positive definiteness. And finally, suppose that you have your Jacobi equation. And so here's the tricky part. You have to show that this Jacobi equation with this boundary data, okay, uh, has only the trivial solution. Now we really have zero time to prove this theorem with extreme detail, uh, but I think it's good for you to at least practice the theorem so that uh, you know, you can check a minimizer, like at least you have the machinery and a rough idea of why it's true. Um, so without further ado, I will start test, um, putting it to practice. Yeah, so you need this three and you get local min. All right, let's start with examples. See how this works. Any questions? So we will go deeper into this Jacobi, but again, this is a, call it L of F of X, all right? And it's very tricky. Uh, if you go deeper into it, uh, this is called conjugate points. Of course, I'm not expecting you to know this. I just want you to test the, the theorem. So what do you have to do? You have to solve this uh, ODE for each C uh, in your domain, A, B. I wrote zero, one, but I mean, it, it, it works for any interval. So minus infinity, infinity, A, B, doesn't matter. Uh, okay. And you have to show that if you have these conditions uh, like that, then uh, f is identically zero, all right? All right, let me do examples. Good. Um, so here's the, your functional, here's your Lagrangian, okay? So, uh, Let's see, we have enough examples, right? I don't want to go too fast. Okay, we have examples. Um, yes. So how do I get this? What is this? Um, yeah. Let's do it together. So what is L of PP? No, 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 L of P. What is L of P? 2P. And what is L of Z? So then if you plug that in and uh, P is equal to what? Good. I'm asking because people keep doing this mistake. Uh, and then, um, uh, what do I plug in for Z? Yeah. Uh, yes, minus Y two, A squared minus two, which is what we wrote. And then uh, you clean it up. And you get this beautiful looking 
uh, linear equation. You use your e to the lambda t and you get a complex value. And so you get true on a metric, all right? Sorry? There should be some extra constant, right? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cosine AX. Uh, I'm just wondering about this guy. No, 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 that's okay. No, no, because this is non-homogeneous. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, it's cosine AX, good. All right, so now use your boundary data. Y zero is zero, let's do it together. So when I put Y zero to be zero, um, who survives? Huh? Yeah, so you have K2 cosine of AX, AX uh, equal to 2A squared, right? Right, and then cosine of four, what did I say? Okay, whatever, fine, you can find the initial data. I don't think that was the point of it. Yeah, so yeah, now let's compute the second variation. What was the function? I forgot. P squared minus A squared, Z squared, two Z. All right. So you have P squared minus A squared, Z squared minus Z with a two. Um, so let's do this together. I don't wanna just do it all myself. So what is L of PP? Yeah, because we took two derivatives of this. Um, and then what is L P Z? What do you think? Why? Huh? Yeah, good. And then uh and then L of Z Z, what? Yeah. Um, um, right. Okay. So the Lysandre condition that we needed to have our functional to be positive definite is immediately satisfied. So life is easy for Lysandre. We don't have to do anything there. There should be minus one over. It should be, damn. There's no two. Are you sure? You're probably right. Oh, cause I took out the two. Ah, you're right. Yes, good job. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Good. Good eye. Yes. Um. So we have Lysandra, and then what? I have to do Jacobi. So let's compute the Jacobi together for the first time. I don't wanna keep doing, yeah. So D dx and then P is two and you have F prime and then you have this constant. Easy? That's the Jacobi equation, all right? Now you, um, yeah. So there's Jacobi and I clean it up a bit. So you get the second order equation, all right? And you solve it. Yeah, so I wanna do this with you. Where's my solution? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so again, uh, F is of the form, uh, where's my guy? A, yeah. So yeah, not surprisingly, you get the same kind of thing. You get C1 sine of AX plus C2, uh, I think you also get cosine, right? No? Do you? All right, let me check. If you put cosine uh, double prime, you, you get back cosine with a minus, right? Um, yeah, so that's why, yeah. Okay. All right, so that's the general solution. 
and my and my goal is to kill the constants. So unfortunately, we don't have time to explain you why uh, you want that. Uh, there's a lot of theory behind this. I mean, it's not even in your book. So actually, it is in your book. Right? It's a bit much. All right. So if I use F0 to be 0, um, like you said before, I get C2 uh, cosine of A times 0 equal to 0. So from here, I get uh, th this guy is 1, right? Okay. So I get C2 is zero. So far so good, I killed one of the constants. So you're left only with <clears throat> the, uh, the first guy. And then you have to prove this for every constant C. So let's do that. So F of C implies uh, C1 sine of A times C is zero. Now, you want the C1 to die. So that means you want this guy to be non-zero, okay? For every C, question, what is it? Okay, for every C uh, uh, between one and zero, okay? That's what they want. That's the, called the conjugate points. We don't have time to explain it, but at least you can do the steps. The steps are not hard. Uh, so now the question is, what do you think A should be to get that sine of AC is zero? What's your guess? I mean, I have a slide, where am I? Yeah, so, so what do we require in order to get sine of AC to be zero? What do you think? First of all, when is it zero? Huh? Yeah, when it's K pi, uh, and A is positive and C is in zero one. So really we're, we're really asking about AC uh, to be, anyway, yeah, for K, but K uh, positive, okay? You understand? All right, because they're both positive, all right. Now, I need this guy to never, I need this to not be true. I need this to not be true. So how can I get this to never be true? So I want A of C to be not K pi. So in other words, I want A C to be strictly less than the smallest K, which is one. So I want this, is that okay? So in other words, I want um, A to be less than uh, I over C. Yeah, I mean, that's what I want. And, uh, and I want this for every C. Um, and uh, since, uh, yeah, since C, uh, is less than one, you really want A to be less than pi. Okay. I mean, this is, has nothing to do with uh, calcul calculus. This is like a calculus question. So all I'm trying to get is I'm trying to get the A's so that this guy would be non-zero, right? This is not really like a, anything more. If you find a shorter proof, I would love to hear it. Um, so everybody okay? Anyways, so the point is what? Uh, we now found for which values of A, uh, we have sine of AC to be non-zero, which gives us that C1 is zero. And so F is identically zero, okay? All right, these are the steps. I know they're mechanical, but I mean, I wish I had more time. What can I say? All right, but at least I will do many examples to help you. So here's another functional. And in office hours, please. I mean, we'll do as many as you want. Um, what do we have about LPP? Right, 
So first of all, what is the Lagrangian here? What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean the two, two yeah. Yeah, so LPP is disgusting. Um, what is the first one? Like you told me many times, is this guy, right? And then, uh, oh, I remember it was easy actually. It was something like one P squared three halves. Yeah, anyways, so um, this is called the Legendre. Uh, Condition, you want this to be strictly positive, and is it? What do you think? I'm not sure if it is because you have this X here. What? What? Yeah. I mean, all right, let me just say that. What do I want to say? Anyways, so it's good. But X can be zero though. But yeah, okay, whatever, it's not negative. That's all I want. Moving on. Uh, okay, no, I have more. I have questions. What's going on here? No, 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 but this can be zero. Um, I remember this is a counter example. Yeah, this is a counter example. So this can be zero, right? So, um, so let's talk about this. What do I want to talk about? No, I just wanted to tell you this, that yeah, the Legendre here is not satisfied, all right? It's not, I mean, it's just not, I don't know, like, uh, that's why I put it there. Um, anyways, so you need uh, this condition. You need the guy you multiply it with to be strictly positive. You're not allowed to be zero at zero or anywhere else, okay? Um, for this function that I wrote before, I, I welcome you to prove that, in fact, it has no local min. This guy, okay. Um, how would you do it? Yeah, find the Euler Lagrange, do the positive definite. Um, I mean the second variation, and you'll see it. All right, let's do more questions, as many as possible. Yeah, okay. So first, let me find the Euler Lagrange, which is terrible. So the Lagrangian is equal to h of x times what? Good, good job. And then what's the Euler Lagrange? H of X times what? Huh? No. Yeah. You set this to zero and uh, it's nice and beautiful. So you get uh, H of X, two Y prime of X is exactly constant. So you get that y of x is equal to zero x, um, you know, uh, one over h of x times uh, two. Oh, no, uh, d, d, dt. Is that okay? All right, good. So that's the Euler Lagrange solution. Why did I call it Jacobi? I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, now let's find uh, the uh, second variation together. So again, the Lagrangian is this guy. So what is L of PP? What do you think? Does it satisfy Legendre? Good, yes. So we have Legendre. Um, let me make some space. And now let's find uh, 
L of, yeah, L of Z, Z, I think you know this. This is zero, L of Z, P is again zero. So the, the second variation is zero to one um, of what? What do you think? What's the second variation? I don't know if you remember, I'm curious. Yeah, with a dot, yeah. Um, so this is your guy and uh, you will notice that it's exactly the same. Okay, so, um, and I should say that if the Jacobi equation confuses you, just think about it as the Legendre equation of the first variation. That's all it is. Uh, okay, if you like stare at it a long time ago, and I mean, you can even do this yourself uh, as an exercise, uh, it's not necessary. Exercise the uh, EL of the uh, second variation functional. Okay, you can try it, you can see what, okay. Anyways, but uh, I, I wanna do it by hand with you. So I know what the uh, Jacobi is because I got the same functional, but I want to do this with you. All right, let's do it. So I want to find the Jacobi equation. Come on. Jesus. Um, I forgot it, where is it? Here. So minus, uh, yep, okay. Good. So the Jacobi equation is minus d dx of p of x, f dot x plus q um, f of x equals zero. There is no q because uh, there are no Z terms, this guy is dead. And we just found the, the P of X, like you guys told me, was two times H of X, F dot equals zero. Um, anyway, so this is Jacobi. And lo and behold, you get the same thing, F of X, is equal to um, zero x of one over h of t, put a constant in front of it, c1 uh, dt plus another constant c2. And now, so this is your um, f of x, and you want to prove that in fact, this guy is identically zero. That's the conjugate condition. You plug in f of zero, and you get what? C1 from zero to zero plus C2. I don't know if you, do, is that okay? So this integral uh, is zero, but then this guy is zero. So you get that C2 is zero. Okay, good. And then now you have to prove that um, if F of C is zero for every C in your interval A, B, so I should have written this general interval. Um, I hope in the final you don't get confused. Uh, any interval works, it doesn't have to be zero one. Um, anyway, so you take this C and you set it to zero like it requires you. And now can someone tell me why this implies C one is zero? Can you guess? Given that H is strictly positive. Yeah, yeah, so we have this, and, and then I should also add, we also have continuity. It, it won't work without continuity. Uh, if you remember, we did this delta ball argument. So yes, uh, H continuous plus uh, H positive implies that the integral is strictly positive. So you killed the constant. So you made your function uh, identically zero. All right, at least I went through the main examples. So 
Yes, please. Uh, we'll have more office hours. I might have three, just in case. Definitely Monday and Friday. And uh, I might even do Wednesday, whoever wants to come. All right, thank you.